Here's a question. When, or maybe how, does a luminance mask inspire our photography? Well, it can happen over time as Photoshop and Lightroom becomes better at dealing with contrast. And then, of course, they add masks to give us even better control. Now, it's looking back at an image shot many years ago and wondering if you could lift the darkness in those rocks easily with a mask. Ten minutes later, the image you have is a definite keeper. And it really was inspired by me just looking for an image to demonstrate a luminance mask. Global editing is first using the crop tool. We're going to straighten that horizon and improve composition by placing the lower rule of thirds line on the horizon and also the rainbow starting point right on the vertical and horizontal strong point. There's nothing wrong with classical composition. Staying with global editing, you can see that I have reduced exposure just a little bit. I've dropped the highlights and opened up those shadows. I've also increased the contrast and we can do that by moving the white slider a little bit to the right and the blacks to the left. I've also added a touch of clarity and vibrancy. There really is no mysteries with what we've done so far. Strategic editing is next via a selection of the sky. I wanted to darken the sky but it needs even more but just at the top. So I've added a gradient mask to add a little more impact. That shows up the left and the right hand sides which are a little on the weak side. So gradient masks there are the answer and it's just a little reduction in exposure that's required, not very much at all. Finally, a little more reduction in exposure right at the base with once again another gradient mask. So I think we're ready to take a look at that luminance mask. From the little blue cross at the top there, I'm going to create a new mask and select it. What we can do here with the eyedropper, we can click on just one tone, but we've got a few tones here. So I'm going to just click and drag across these tones where I've got some dark shadow and some other tones in there. You can see what I've done. But we can also see instantly that we've got far too much selected. So let's go over to the options on the right hand side. Because over here we have some options to adjust things. If I click on this icon here and drop that back, you can see how it makes the selection a lot more solid. But in fact, we only need it solid where the rocks are. So probably about there. Take this one here and drop it back. And we can get to a point where we've got most of the dark areas selected in our image. But even then, sometimes, let's go a little further, sometimes we can often have areas selected which may not be appropriate. So what I'm going to do here is subtract from that mask. And I'm going to use the brush to do that. I'm going to push the flow up fairly high. And over on the left hand side, I'll adjust the brush with the square bracket keys. There you can see I can quickly and easily take away the selections in any place where I don't need it to be. So now we can look at those rocks in the foreground, which are quite crucial to this image. I'll turn the overlay off here so we can see the rock face before we actually move any sliders. So what do we want to do? Well, we'd like to lift the shadows. Uh, that's done quite a bit. Do we want to go any further? Doesn't seem to be making a great deal of difference past that point. Let's have a little bit of exposure. One of the things we don't want to do is go too far with these things because in these circumstances, we do expect to see this area of rock to be quite dark. But what I want to do here, I'm going to go a little bit lighter than perhaps I would normally do because what I'm going to suggest here is that even once we've created the mask, we can adjust it. Difficult to know how to describe this. Should we say on the fly? 
Because if you notice, in lightening the rocks here, I've lightened the sand around the edge. So why can't I subtract from the mask? I can choose the brush again. I don't have to work with the flow fully up. I can work with it quite low. I can zoom into the image. I can adjust my flow and I can carefully work around the areas where I feel it's not helping my image. Now I'm doing this very quick and dirty as you can see because I'm making a five minute video and there's limited time. But you get the idea that we've got ultimate control here. We've always been able to do this sort of work in the past before the introduction of masks. But now we can do things quickly and without hours of learning. Thanks for watching.